Welcome to the making of Dead and Breakfast, Behind the Screens. Second sticks. All right. Make movies. Call it, Mike! Bang, bang! Retreat, 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 retreat! Crawl back, Miss Kimball, crawl back! The following occurred during the months of February to March 2003. Principal photography took place in the city of Livermore, California. The production team took over the entirety of their hotel, often using the lobby to work instead of their office. And remember, the sheriff's going to be leading the way, and he's just going to stop right in front of him and tree, and he's just going to go like that. First AD Mike Devaney does the impossible task of juggling all the actors' schedules during pilot season. Hi, Jeremy. Right now, um, I have you scheduled on the weekends, uh, which is like... Pre-production uh, entails many things. You can get 8 by 10 photos. You want you want to be able to do that that often. Right, 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 right. But I want to I want to uh, I want to get something like you know like a little higher than the, the, one of the standard kind. Right. Scheduling. Careful planning of everything. Special effects tests and thawing beavers. I could say something about your beaver, <laughs> but... <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's dead all right. Well, how about beaver? Sleazy, violent, ugly, romantic, sweet. <laughs> everything. You know, Thank you, Dad. Everything, and it's funny. <laughs> That's right, David. Dead and Breakfast was shot in the winter of 2003, over 397 days, with a budget of over $3 trillion. It could have solved the deficit in the United States, but chose not to, in order to bring entertainment to the masses. Director Matthew Lutweiler's film revolves around six friends on their way to a wedding when they get stuck in a town gone mad. On Dead and Breakfast's $500,000 budget and 18-day shooting schedule, little room was left for grandiose over-expenditures, error, or relaxation. Look at this dickhead. So long. Wait, let me. This is this is my impression of producers. Time, money, time, money. We don't have any. Special effects master Michael Mosher and his team created the jaw-dropping effects for Dead and Breakfast. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think they do a lot of films like that anymore. It seems like they're starting to come back into into popularity, you know, now. But you know, these are kind of like the old. You know, back in the early 80s, you know, the whole, you know, makeup garage, you know, effect shops that, you know, you build it out of your garage and, you know, you kind of fly by the seat of your pants. Well, I had never used that much blood in a movie before, and I'd never cut anybody's head off with a chainsaw. So, here we are in the makeup trailer. Yeah. Smells 
Nice. Oh, and, and Eric Palladino is, is getting some prosthetic put on. That's fun yeah. stuff. That's good stuff. This is wake up and love the taste. And we did we did a lot of stuff that hadn't been done in films before, as far as the blood, all the blood stuff that we did. Um, that we used a lot of. <laughs> yeah. And the the way that we made it get around was new and exciting. And there's nothing like magnets, man. <laughs> magnets. Oh shit. Magnet. Like a great big a, fat hunkin' totally like there. magnet. It's, it's a, one of those rare earth pulls like 45 pounds. This so this is what I got my bachelor's degree in theater for. <laughs> Someone asked me like two months ago, just two months ago. No, no, four months ago. Um, what's the date? March 1st. Um, is it really March yeah, 1st? Yeah, March 1st. At 4.30 in the morning, you'd have a chainsaw <laughs> in, your neck, in your neck at 4.30 a.m. I would go, nah. I'd be sleeping and dreaming that I had a chainsaw in the middle of my neck. It's the book of love. This is... <laughs> For some films, less is more, but in our case, more is more. 29 gallons in 19 days. You know, Michael and I are probably more conservative with, with the blood and rounds is just like, let it flow. <laughs> What's your favorite thing in this stuff? Priest. My favorite thing is Priest. Okay. I hope I'm not disturbing you, but there's never been a better time for joining my no! plot. Fuck. And I was, I was literally crouched behind the sign, and Matt yelled, action, I dropped the sign and ran like hell so that they could get above it in time to not see my head. And then Rallis was sitting down there with, with a uh, with a Hudson spray with the pump pumping out of it, but just as the, the camera went over the top. And uh, when I finally saw it on screen, it looked surprisingly cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but what does the head do? Is there like it's, head's on wires? It's, no, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's okay. all on wires. Oh, yeah, then fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. On. Uh, well, no one ever done that to me before. Michael Bozier. Yes. Are you ready? We are get up there and do what you can do. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. That's great. That was like the money. I can't find a sideburn over here. Ew. These are the uh, pipe guns that are described in the script that okay. are the impromptu weapons since they find a uh, box of shotgun shells but no shotguns. Right. And being the resourceful young people that they are, they find the uh, pipes that are used in the house for the re uh, restoration and some vice grips and, the, as I said, the shotgun shells, and they make their own weapons out of them. cap on screws in the back there, there's a hole, they hit it with a nail and a hammer, and it fires off the primer of the shotgun shell. On the forward vice grip here, we actually have two little switches. Uh, both of these have to be pressed to fire off the pyro device. And then right here, this is what's called a firing pot. And we put a squib, mm -hmm. or a, an electrical triggering device, and it creates a big flash and spark and like that, and uh, also a boom. <laughs> Of course, you have the one actor behind here with the hammer and the nail. They hit it, and from the force of that, this person will know to press those things right there. A big flash, and the spark comes out, and noise, and you have a shot firing shotgun. Hey, David! David! Come here! Hold this. Hold it tight, all right? You would never want to do this in real life because a gun uh, breach is hardened uh, to uh, contain and direct the explosion. These pipes themselves are not hardened to do so. So in real life, this probably wouldn't work. It would probably blow up in their face. Nobody should try this at home. He's getting a vacuum form plate attached to his head. 
notice the screw eye. Screw eye, yes, what? Is that sealed what? up by glue? Yeah, it's sealed on by medical adhesive. Nice. Strong shit. That can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> and notice here, the appliance? Yeah. Sculpted to Brian's sideburn. This is uh, going to be the bass player who uh, gets his uh, head cut off, top of his head cut off with a cymbal, which as you can see is going to be this huge gash right here. And right now I'm performing a modern version of the Chinese water torture on his face, hoping that he will finally go crazy and run screaming from the trailer. This is his blood tubing. Near him? I don't want to be near him. Jesus so Christ. Has Brian activated himself? No. But I'm going to be way out of harm's reach. We're talking 120 PSI. It's quite a cigarette burn you have in your hand there. Yeah, you know, I get punished when I don't behave, and Michael. <laughs> He's a stern taskmaster. Master. Really, you usually don't use the word task when you call me master. The crew, the scouts, the liars, Now, a zombie line dance can either be the funniest thing in the world or the most bizarre. Loot Weiler wasn't sure until its film festival premiere when everyone laughed and to his surprise didn't throw anything. The shoot culminated with a marathon 26 hour barroom brawl sequence. Toward the end of the shoot, Matthew had a few discussions with his producers about getting all the shots he had originally intended. The producers wanted to cut some shots. Matthew didn't. And the other issue is, if I truly had two nights here, like we were originally going to have, it would be no problem. But I don't have two nights here, because I'll always pick up shit that i got to do tomorrow night, too. You know? When the tr this the friendly give and take between directors and producers happens only 715 times a day during an average shoot. Let's count how many times four-letter words are used. I don't have all these little bits and pieces of everybody getting fucked up. You're not going to get a sense of what the fuck's going on and why anybody's possessed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you need. I, 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 I set up need, four things of seeing people go in the box, her foam falls into the box, you know what I mean, when they pour it in. Those are gags that are set up so you understand what's going on in the movie. Right now, what we're getting, it's just people getting shot and people fighting. Yeah, a whole block or two. Hours. I don't know. Let's just see how the fucking night goes. Tomorrow, if this night goes to fucking total shit, then we fix it tomorrow. But starting to cut shit out now, you're just giving up, you know? Just okay. quitting. Are you lefty? There you go. Bang! They came out. No, you're not shooting on. That was the point. Point at him, we think you're gonna shoot him. Do you ever hope for more? Will we always hope for more? Yeah, we always hope for more. It was amazing to be able to have the director write a script and, and do the best that we could to, to build his vision, and nobody ever came to the shop and said, no, no, this is not the way we want it. I mean, essentially, yeah. they shot what we built, and nobody bitched about it, and, and everybody seemed happy. And everything we did made it on screen. And everything yeah. we did made it on screen because, you know, they couldn't afford to cut anything out. Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> Okay, go up to the pipe. Shoot, shoot the pipe. There you go. Now try it. Look at him. Look at him now. Look at, him. Look at her. Look at her. Look at him. Look at her. Look at him. Look at the pipe. Try and get that pipe. Ah! All right. All right. Cut. <laughs>
At the end of all the cold nights covered in blood, fighting zombies and producers, and struggling with sleep deprivation, the result was a horror film with a sense of humor. <laughs> Actually, there ain't much around these parts, uh, except maybe my half. <laughs> Turns out you can have your breakfast and eat it too. Well, this used to be such a quiet little town. We never had too much trouble around here till that spirit was released. Oh, we were haunted by the deceased, and now there's all this crazy shit that's going down here. Never had too much trouble around here till that spirit was released. Oh, we were haunted by the deceased, and now there's all this crazy shit that's going down here. Thanks for joining us for Dead and Breakfast Behind the Screams.